Let us not forget that education is the most powerful weapon with which we can change the world. And I speak of our education, infrastructure, teachers, and curriculum. In a video that went viral about a year ago, a retiree in some extreme part of Lagos constructed a makeshift bridge to connect the community with the next. He told the bridge, but allowed only students to pass free. It was not the makeshift bridge that caught my attention, but the fact that it okay. was in Lagos. To me, they'll shift it to you when your time And comes. maybe students from that community might have been denied education, but for that bridge. If it could happen in Lagos, where else is secret? We have seen videos of young pupils attending classes under extreme situations, leaking roofs, or sometimes no roof, and under trees with stones as chairs and their laps as the desk. I used to think that the low literacy levels in the north was all about children and parents not being interested in education until I was corrected that in some instances, there were actually no schools to go to. And because of the large landmass in that part of town, the issue of trekking to the next community to attend school is off the table. So we have problems of no schools, poor physical infrastructure, infrastructure, no furniture, no teaching aids. Do you know there are graduates in Nigeria who have never used a computer? The closest they ever got was their phone. But the education infrastructure is just one problem. How about the teachers? Our education space is populated by a whole lot of teachers who could not pass primary four standard examinations. Some who could not speak correct English language, but are teaching students in English. It is such a sad situation that some unions threatening the governor who dared to fire these incompetent teachers. That was how low we have sunk at some people. What is the standard qualification for teaching at the various levels of education in Nigeria? Who enforces the standard? The last of the education tripod I'm discussing today is a curriculum. So even if we have the infrastructure and the teachers, what are, they, what are we teaching these students? How Mongo Park discovered the Niger? Has our curriculum transformed radically from the industrial age framework handed over by the colonial masters? Is our education in sync with our national orientation and the development vision for the country? Is our education system churning out human resources of the quantity and quality that will support growth and employment? Or are we just producing irrespective of relevance to the society? I would like to leave us with a few questions on this subject matter. Are we still stuck on the industrial age orientation that says, if you do not pass English and math, you are done? Since we know that technology is driving to this world and into the future, have we repositioned our education system to align with this reality? Are there students today that our existing system has left behind? Last I checked, South Africa's central government's budget provision for education alone was bigger than Nigeria's entire budget for the year. There is a strong message in that comparison. If we're going to compete in the world ahead, we must reorder our priorities and let education take its prime position. Yeah, um, I, I, I often say that education is the best legacy any parent or any nation can bequeath to its um, youth. But unfortunately, when you have uh, people who are uneducated, you know, leading the others, education will become a priority to them. And that was how, you know, the military came on board and um, education was it a big deal to them and they believe you is you know and now we continue to create that excuse is it not just administration anybody can do it anyway you don't need a medical doctor to be a minister of works after all is admin you don't need a lawyer to be attorney general after all is admin you know but you forget that there are some basic nitty-gritty some basic terms that will be used in the course of meetings and discussion 
that the, the leader has stand. to be, yeah. So you now bring a minister to learn on the job. Before he finished learning, he probably would have been transferred and you bring another one. So it's quite unfortunate and that's why you create, you have them, um, you know, professors of education, but you bring a lawyer to head the Minister of Education. And you know, Lib, where I want to come in is this idea of a Diamond Jubilee celebration. I understand in some quarters uh, they're saying that we're going to celebrate for a year. And I'm looking at the huge amount of money that's going to go into a one-year celebration. With my um, sanitary pad project, I went back again and re I mean, you know, looked at what I was offering again. And I realized that we could give sanitary pads. But what about toilets? If these girls don't have that space to change, they're not still going to come to school. What about if you gave them toilets and they have no water in school, boreholes? A lot of schools don't have toilets and water. They're still not going to come to school. So I had to put boreholes and you know, provision of toilets also, in addition to the sanitary pad. And I'm just a citizen. Our governments, you know, they're owing us these things for our children. Children can't in the 21st century be coming to school to read on their laps, to write on their laps. In modern day Nigeria, it is wrong. It is not fair on those children. We cannot say Nigeria of the 60s is better than Nigeria of the millennium. It is so not fair. We need this reform in education. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. And I, I'd want to tie it to, you know, um, when you don't have clear vision of what uh, you want to achieve. Um, if you understand the implication of having a skilled uh, manpower. manpower and how it translates to productivity, then you pay emphasis on educating people. Now, what we call education is beyond brick wall brick and mortar and putting teachers oh, you need to have English. you need to have clear what do you what problem are you trying to solve <laughs> we have peculiar problems for instance we have for it it's 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 strange to me that after 60 years we don't have people who can you know we don't have organic solution to our exploration uh, problem in Nigeria. GSM. We GSM have, uh, we what do you call it? We can't produce our own GSM. Um, we have beauty men that has become a problem in Ondo, right. and we don't have the skill set that would, you know, refine this thing to tar roads. If we begin to locally generate skill set, imagine the and number of add, people that will be empowered. The iron, skill, the, the iron the engineers iron that we have here, we still go to so, get engineers from Germany. Exactly. So, so when you see all of this, you see the value chain route. and you see the importance it, play, it plays. So there is a need for us to take education very seriously. All right. I think that um, it was Aristotle who said that uh, education is the ornament of prosperity and refuge in adversity. Um, that if you tie that to section 18, subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution has amended the Constitution frivolously made provisions for, on how the issue of education should be managed by the country. But what you see is that people come to tell you that that section is not justiciable. And, then, uh, and then the government, the governors of state, because education is actually on the concurrent list from uh, part two of the second schedule of the Constitution. And then what you have is we have not been able to invest enough in education. And yet we are talking about development. And you cannot develop without education. Basic education. Yeah. Yeah. We have, you have, you, you, you have universal basic education that is a product of legislation. Right. Why the states are failing at that, the federal government is also failing at our own level. So what we have now is a system that have not been able to contribute positively to the development of the minds of the citizens of Nigeria. And you cannot have development without education. So by the time we have this kind of structure, you are going to continue to have problems. You have to spend more money to fight insurgency because I mean, if, uh, it is the end result of lack of you know, education. And all imagine that. the entire budget of Nigeria is just the education <laughs> budget of South Africa. Of course. <laughs> this, you know, to put well, things in perspective. It well, tells you where our priority lies. Well, we really need to fix our educational system in this country. In a few seconds, I would address our Forex ban right after the break. Thank you.